And you guys, this is going to be a game changer for the garden this year. I cannot believe we did this. Hey, and welcome back to Mini Urban Farm, a channel about gardening and homesteading in the suburbs. Um, today, I'm doing my March garden tour for you guys, and there has been so much going on this month. It's crazy in the garden here. Um, it may not look like it, and I will show you exactly what I mean in a minute, but there is a ton of stuff happening in the garden. So let me turn around the camera and show you exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so the first thing I want to share with you guys is that the entire garden is gone, right? So that's what I mean. It may not look like there's a ton going on here um, because all the beds are empty, right? I ripped out everything. Um, the last video I posted just was me ripping out my entire garden. So if you haven't seen that video, go ahead and check that out also. Um, but things that are going on here in the garden. First and foremost, our seedlings are almost ready to go in the garden. Um, I am actually going to be putting them in a little bit early here because we are going on a trip so they're not as big as i would like for the most part right these zucchinis and the yellow squash are doing really really well um the tomatoes i would prefer if they were a tiny bit bigger um as well some of the eggplant here and the peppers but i will live with it for right now but we potted up all the tomatoes a couple days ago and so everything will be going in the garden this weekend all right, so secondly is that I ripped up the entire garden. Um, like I mentioned, that was much more extensive than I had ever planned on it being. Um, I have previously had gardens. I've had gardens for over 10 years now. Um, they've been much smaller gardens. I have never gardened um, in this much space. And I know it's not like a ton of space, um, but for an urban garden, it's pretty big. It's a pretty good size. Um, it's about 450 square feet for the entire um, everything, the rocks, the raised beds, everything. And inside the beds, I think is like almost 200 square feet and so a lot of the things I had planted um, for the first time and they had roots that just would not let go um, which is probably a good thing because we did so well in the garden last season um, but it was such a pain um, to rip that out so I will spare you the details um, if you haven't seen that video go watch it but it was just you know, if you're gonna rip out your garden, plan some time for it. And then the other thing was I had to do something with all of that stuff, all the kale, all the carrots. I had to find a way to put it in the fridge or preserve it or something. So it was just such a pain, um, but just something to keep in mind when you are, you know, planning your time for ripping out your, your garden from last season for a spring garden cleanup, plan extra time. I promise you, if you don't need it, that's good. But if you do need it, you will be thankful that you planned all that time for it. And also on a side note here, now that all the garden beds are empty, is that Milo, who I love and adore with all my heart, he knows he's in trouble now, he loves to eat dirt. I have no idea why he does this, um, so he's <laughs> he's running away now. Um, but he goes inside the actual garden beds, right? He'll come up in here and he'll actually take a handful of this, or not a handful, a pawful, mouthful, whatever you want to call it, and he will eat it. All right, so my favorite addition to the garden this month and probably the biggest thing that will save me a ton of headaches is this right here, um, this drip irrigation that we've put in. So let me take you and show you exactly what I'm talking about. This, um, this is the end of the line, right? So this is one out of nine beds. It, sorry for the mess, it is quite a disaster right now. Um, I have to actually like come and screw them all in place and make sure that it's all kind of like attached to the bed. So I haven't done that yet, but they are all in all the lines have been put in they come over here it's split and then inside every bed we have this half inch hose and we have this quarter inch line milo what are you doing yeah you hmm see what i mean all right so we have this half inch tubing here and then we have the quarter inch and we have a drip irrigation system um i i could have bought the ones that were actually you know they had little holes in them but i decided to be a little bit cheap this time and buy the ones that didn't have that so i ended up coming through here and poking holes in every single part now this hasn't been set up yet i have to stake it down um, and decide exactly where i want it but there is tons of tubing in here i just i figured i'd rather have way more and you know extra not need it than have to deal with the plants not getting watered so that has been the biggest addition to the garden this year so if you guys are interested, I can do an entire, you know, like setup um, video. Well, not a setup because it's it's already been set up, um, but I can walk you through the steps of like what exactly um, it involves, the connectors, the elbows, everything. Um, if you want to see that video, leave me a comment um, in the comment section below just so I know, you know, I can go ahead and make that video. Um, but that has been the biggest addition this season to the garden. Well, 
this season, next season, whatever you want to call it. So I wasn't planning on putting in irrigation um, right now. It is on my 2021 goals for the garden, um, my homesteading garden goals, but we're actually going out of town and I feel really bad every single time I have to ask like one of the neighbors or a family member or friend or whoever it is to come and like water the garden for me and to check and make sure it dies it, and to check and make sure that it hasn't died. Um, and not only that, but a lot of people, you know, if you're a gardener, I'm sure you can relate. Like these are my babies. These are my plants. So a lot of people, you know, they can say, okay, well it's watered and walk away from it. But to me, I want to make sure it's watered. It's trellising properly. You know, it doesn't show any signs of disease. There's no pests on it. All the other stuff, um, which I know an irrigation system does not fix, but it fixes one of those that I don't have to worry about it actually getting watered. Um, so last time I had somebody come in and do the watering for the garden, there were a lot of crops that got overwatered, um, and they did not make it. So this time, I'm just gonna play it safe and make sure that you know, as much of a control freak as I am, everything is set up um, before we leave for our trip, and that that is taken care of. That is going to also save me tons and tons of time every single day um, after we get back because it'll still be in place. It's on a timer, and now I don't have to go and or I don't have to come out here and water every single day, like. If you're a gardener, I'm sure you can really, you know, manually watering everything is such a pain um, to come out. And especially if you live in a climate like here in Central Florida that in the summers it gets up to 100, 110 degrees. Like I'm out here, you know, for hours a week, you know, watering morning and nights and it's such a pain. So I am so glad that we ended up doing that. It did not cost that much. Um, but yeah, so anyway, on to the next piece of the, the March garden. All right, so the next part of the March garden is this planting list that I have right here. Um, I'm actually gonna set this down here on top of the cover I have here because it is kind of windy. But if you watch the, um, the mapping out my garden video, you'll know that this is how I map out my garden. Now, I'm not going to be doing this today, but I'm going to be doing it probably this weekend when I map out my entire garden and plant everything. You can see I have like a little legend here of everything that I'm growing. Um, and then it's all mapped out here, right? So I have loofah, loofah, I have arugula, arugula, all of the good stuff, right? Um, every time I plan out my garden, I do this. And then I just come out here ahead of time just to make sure that um, this is actually aligning with the beds, right? So I know that this is going to be Roma tomatoes, okra, right? And I just go, so that's my back garden bed, which is that one back there in the corner. And then you can see the other ones down the list. And this is this side I'm standing on. This is the side right behind me. I am standing right there, right right here. And this is inside the garden bed right now. Um, so I come in here and I just take my little list. And I walk the garden, right? I do this every season. And I visually map it out, right? I'm a very visual person. So I want to make sure, all right, this is my back garden bed. And sorry about the mess right now. I know this actually, this line has to be tight in place. I'm going to get like those little tubing straps for plumbing and make sure that the corners are aligned so sorry right now but um i wanted to show you guys this so this is going to be zucchini and ys is yellow squash so we're gonna have one zucchini one yellow squash one zucchini one yellow squash i could put them all together um like zucchini zucchini or yellow squash yellow squash i just did it like this because honestly i like the little color combination of like green and yellow it's not focusing there we go. So I like just having it like green and yellow, green and yellow. Um, maybe that's my inward sense of this coming out. And then on this side, it's JB, SC, and CW. I can't even remember what these things are right now. I think those jade, bush bean, yeah. And then SC is, where is it? All right, so Swiss chard and Cherokee wax beans are all going right here. So I just want to make sure, right, like I have one bean plant. So I have one bean plant here, or not one bean plant, but I have like one type of beans here it's going to be a whole bunch of green um of bean plants Ooh. and then i have a whole more bunch right here and then swiss chard in the middle so i'm just trying to imagine like what that looks like and if it's going to be crowded if stuff is going to be like toppling out onto the the rocks over here and just go through every single bed like that i have all right i'll walk the entire thing and do that and just imagine what it's going to look like right because you're on a computer and you're not necessarily thinking like stuff is spilling onto the rocks do i have enough space to walk if things get really really big right and that's actually one of the reasons 
try not to go too fast that i put the zucchini and the yellow squash in here this is actually much wider right so this is three feet where my other beds are two and a half feet and i know that zucchini gets really 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 big so i wanted to make sure that it has enough space so that will be going in here and i just walk down the line and do this with everything so that really helps me to visualize and just make sure that i'm not making any mistakes when it comes to actually planting things out you know i have hundreds of seedlings that I'm planting out and if you have a garden and you're transplanting things you know that things get mixed up really really easily it's so easy to mix up where you're planting this seed packet versus that seed packet you know I just want to make sure I have everything on point before I plant it out um, because there have been times where I think this is one crop and I'm like why did this not you know germinate why did it not grow the way it's supposed to and lo and behold it is something completely different so that has really helped me. Um, I hope that if you know if you're looking for a way to map out your garden, I hope that helps you too. Go and check out the video. Um, it is very detailed. Um, it's very long, so sorry in advance. But it is everything that you need to know. Um, you know, it's it's companion planting, it's raised bed um, spacing, um, square foot spacing, all of that stuff. So that is pretty much the March garden. Um, I am so excited. For this season you know i have been growing a long time and i'm growing so many new varieties um, that i cannot wait to grow personally i think this is going to be such a great year you know this past season in the garden was the first year that we we're growing in this space right um, i moved up from south florida and this is the first time that i had this garden so now I am accustomed to where the light is, where everything falls. So I think it's gonna be really, really great and I'm growing so many new things. I cannot wait to share with you guys. If you like this video, do not forget to like and subscribe. Um, it really helps the channel out. And you know, also so you can get notifications for more urban homesteading and more urban gardening content. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.